Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Good Morning Jinnah. And we've previously covered a few different topics on this show. But today I want to cover something that meant a lot to me. And it is a game called Sable. That is one of the best indies I've ever played, for being honest. I kind of just fell in love with this game. Almost from the moment I started playing it. And you got to watch me just piss about and ride around on this little sandblaster. But... My god, this game is gorgeous and fun and just great. Like, I love a good AAA game and a big experience as much as the next guy, but every now and then, an indie game will just hit you and give you... I don't love crashing into those trees because the physics are fucked. Um, but, like, to just give you something that you don't get elsewhere, and I don't know what it is. This game was that for me. First of all... I ride around in the night, so you can see the different biomes where they meet, and the moonlight makes different colours. I love the art style, and I love the beauty of this game. I think this game looks fantastic. I have to try and look for a point of interest or something to go see. Something huge like the whale. This game has some incredibly huge set pieces and bits of scenery and environments to go and explore and you have these huge puzzles to complete and yeah this game is beautiful i mean look at the scale on that thing that's just one bit of this wreck i love that the rate at which the guy is animated that you play is completely different to everything around you It's such a good game. And it's it's one of those games that doesn't hold your hand. It puts you in this world and it says you're coming of age, choose what path you're on. And there's like four or five different ones you can go down. You collect these masks which make you enter that type of path of your choice. When you get so many the game ends and you can move on but it just throws you out in the world for you to discover and do what you want to do and it's just incredible. And again, another Game Pass game for people who want to check out this one without uh, shelling out too much money, which I get it. Times are hard. A lot of people don't want to spend a lot of money on games. But I mean, graphically, this game always astounds me. I think it looks amazing. As you can see, we're just entering into this spaceship that's crashed called The Whale. And it's up to you to fill in the blanks, because you're a race of people living on this planet, you're not told where. And you're finding these technologies and, you know, spacesuits like I've got on here, because I've pretty much finished the game. But there's no backstory, or there's no... There's little bits here and there, but it's for you to fill in the gaps of what you thought happens, and what you think is happened on this planet to lead these people effectively to become nomadic again and kind of almost give up on technology other than the little hover uh, bikes that you saw me on earlier because the race who brought all this here could clearly build impressive things and travel between planets but it's kind of been lost to the wilderness and it's for you to set out and rediscover it all this such a cool idea and such a beautiful game. Little moments, I guess. I'm not sure if I've actually been in here before. So this could be a first for me. I'll soon find out. I mean, I must have gone through there before, surely. I'm going to say yes. So the most of the game is spent solving puzzles. So I've already done these. You can see these green uh, lights and the crates floating around. And the idea is that you climb from one to another. And you jump and use your orb like this to float and time it and work your way up to the top. And activate a control panel. Actually, I'll show you some of the sights in this game. I can find another good one to give you. I mean, 
mean there is a lot this map is pretty huge some beautiful sights travel to the watch and show you what that's like again spoilers if you're going to jump in this game i'm kind of showing you some of the best sites that you're going to see so we'll go outside again you can see what i'm talking about like the scope and the scales you've got an enormous worm in the distance, almost like Dune. Got an enormous skeleton of an animal there, which actually has a city built underneath it. You can see the birds and stuff flying off in the distance. That over there, that kind of weather balloon, is actually a person um, and one of the clans that I was talking about. You can go there, you can get a mask, and you can use that to become one of their people if you get enough of them. And again, little below us and just yeah it's really cool how hardly anything's explained is for you to put your own kind of thoughts on what you think is going on if I remember correctly the watch is an impressive place also uh, home to one of what I would say is the more difficult puzzles in the game again I've completed it so you're not going to see a lot in terms of what you need to do again this looks like a huge room but this is just a, I say small relatively small chamber compared to what you're going to see as you explore into the game and it's just the environments are colossal but they're not just for show you actually have to explore them and learn things and interact and I love this game I just think it's one of those rare games that comes along that you get to play and everyone who plays it has a kind of different experience with the game and different opinions on the different places you visit it's fantastic And as I said, I've done all the challenges. I've unlocked this enormous sundial and planets that you have to get in exactly the right place, otherwise, it doesn't quite work. I managed to unlock another chamber in here, so even more to see that this is if this place wasn't big enough. Even more to explore and visit and talk to and interact with and just and this is what I mean even when it explains stuff this is the most of what you get in so like she said she's being kind of filled in on the kind of the, the history of her people and how they came here and she said like the scale of this thing that they built before that sent out even the whale This is why indie games are really important to gaming. And last year, especially, I think indie games like uh, Death Store, Song of Iron, Recompile, they really carried the year. Most of the year, a lot of the big games were missing. Same this year. And games like this have really helped carry and keep gaming going. And no offense to these big AAA games, I love playing them, but. 
think sometimes they're missing something. It's like they don't do, they don't take risks anymore. Like I'm looking forward towards Starfield, but I don't think I have as much just random stuff to explore as this. Probably not. Can I show you in this crazy world? Like the sands up here isn't for me that exciting. But there is a place where there's this huge. Maybe Rowdy's way, is it? Oh, too not here for you to be honest. That's not right. Bridge of the Betrayed. This place, I think, is uh, really, really cool. It's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Again, in terms of scale for the game. I think I have to run back to show you it all. This is too big. I have a cool thing about this game. You can climb anything. And you can upgrade your stamina as you go. A bit like an RPG. So I've done with my character. So I can now climb higher, run further. Get to places I couldn't before. Just... The scale of the game just destroyed bridge in two halves where these huge statues are fighting. It's incredible. Get my bike over here, shall we? This bike, as well as the costume I'm wearing, any of the villages or towns you go to, you can customize the bike. There's four or five key components that you can change. And same with your outfits, you can change your boots, your suit, your helmet, whatever you want, really. It's very cool. Like I said, the art style is amazing. The all the colors change as um, night time comes. Such a cool game. And one that I highly recommend. If you've never played this or never heard of it till now, Sable, definitely worth your time. Get involved in because you'll find so much stuff out there to just do and explore. It's awesome. It's one of those games where when you've played so much of it you wish you could start it again and have never played it. Like you get envious of people try you know, experiencing the game for the first time. And I showed you a wreckage earlier that I said was pretty big. I mean this one is on a whole other scale. It's just ridiculous. It looks like a mountain in the distance, but this isn't a mountain. This is yet yeah, another wreckage in an absolutely enormous spaceship full of puzzles and platforming sections for you to go and explore. And that bridge we came from, you can just about seeing the distance there. Give you a, a scale of how big this game is. We went from there to here. And that's the map. So how huge everything is on this game. <clears throat> we just went from one colossal structure to another and barely moved. <laughs> on the map, like what an inch on the screen. 
It's, uh, there's a lot to see and do here. And even things like this that are not marked, but you can tell it's a point of interest. You'll find new things there. I'm going to travel here and leave it. There isn't much to see at the Atomic Heart, if I'm honest. But as you can tell, I'm starting to lose my voice. So I think probably a good time to call it. For this episode of Good Morning Xbox, I said Good Morning Jenna. It's just simply been about Indies more than anything. And in particular, Sable. I think it's a game that everyone should try and experience and just enjoy making your own story, finding out where you came from, and just, you know, the backstory of this planet. This game is so cool. I can't remember. I should drop into there now. But that's something else to find for another time. But that's going to be a shorter episode today, and this one's simple. Go check out Sable. This game is amazing. There's some Metal Hellsinger indies are on top at the moment. They always have been. And since Death's Door, especially last year, really raised the bar. But this game is. It holds a special place in my heart because it's a game that just trusts you to enjoy the world without having to leave markers or hold your hand every step of the way. It just wants you to go out there and discover it and have fun. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate that. Not enough games have the confidence to just let you enjoy what they created. And I think more should. But my voice is almost completely gone. So thanks for watching, good morning Jinna again, and as you can see, a bit of stick drift, setting my guy off there, if I, yeah, <laughs> thank you as always for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, you should, bye all.